It was with that idea, of course, that the torch became so necessary in the blackout. Ah, drat it, but what's the good of a torch without a battery? Remember the big shortage last winter? Batteries are interesting things, you know, and their origin can be traced back to good Queen Bessie's day when electricity was studied more as a mystery than a science. It was the scientist Volta who made the first battery. It consisted of discs of zinc and copper placed alternately in a pile and sandwiched between pads of acidulated cloth. With a wire running from top to bottom, a current was made to flow. Glass rods kept the pile in place, but it was found that the pile would also work dry. The Zamboni pile was a paper strip, silvered on one side and striped with binoxide of manganese on the other. To make a dry battery, discs were punched out of the strip and hundreds of them put into a glass tube. Wood plugs were placed at the end of the tube and by screwing the discs together, enough current for 45 years was actually produced. It rang an electric bell. But friend Volta discovered an even better arrangement. One cell meant only a small voltage and he found that by grouping a number of cells together, he could increase it in proportion. So the famous Couronne des Tasses, or Crown of Cups, was born. But the great fault of this simple arrangement was polarization, as it's called, the flowing of the current in a reverse direction. The diagram shows the right way. But hydrogen bubbles on the copper tended to reverse the flow through the acid, with the result that the current was going and coming back. One of the best known of the improved batteries is the Leclanche. The diagram shows how it's constructed. The carbon rod provides the positive current and the zinc rod the negative. By jellying the liquid with heat and with slight modifications, we get the familiar dry cell. Now, let's see. We hope this sort of thing won't happen again. But batteries like batter puddings can be made at home. All you need are a zinc can, a carbon rod, a depolarizer mixture, some electrolyte fluid and an iron will. Press the mixture into a special mould that's fitted with an ejector and carbon rod through the middle. Now with the ejector, remove the rod and you have a dolly of the mixture which you wrap in a square of muslin. After the ends have been dipped in wax and made tight, the dolly is placed in the zinc can. The space between the dolly and the larger can is filled with the electrolyte fluid and the can placed in boiling water for a minute and then cooled. Except for the trimmings, you've made one cell or half a number eight battery. And won't hubby be pleased? Of all the clever little women. Now let's see, but you can't see with this, maybe the bulb's burnt out. Easy, get that anywhere. Hello, what's this? Damn, twice. If seeing's believing, maybe you'll understand why the good people